Hi, this is Chicho. <laughs> Hi, this is Chicho, end of May 2009, and welcome to series three of the language of mathematics. Now, what we're going to talk about in this series is going to be, from what I figured out to be, uh, the most important symbol in the language of math, which is the equal sign. But before we get into uh, you know understanding the equal sign, which is really directly related to units, uh, units are basically you know specifying what it is that we're talking about in math, right? But before we get into that stuff, we have to do a little recap of what we've covered so far, which is basically dealing with the real number, uh, real number set, um, dealing with operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. So basically, crunching numbers. And what we did was uh, because we were going to get into stuff as fast as we can, we also introduced exponents, which was in series two, with uh, radicals. So exponents are really radicals, are the same thing, just fractions and not fractions, right? Um, if you need a recap, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, take a look at the videos. What we're going to do right now is go through the stuff really quick and then uh, start talking about how it relates to the equal sign, okay? So let's go uh, to a little wall here and just do a little quick drawing sketches and, uh, you know, visually try to understand or remember what it is that we talked about before and how it applied everywhere. If you remember the first stuff we got into when we started talking about the language of mathematics was the real number set. So let's do a little uh, sketch of it and talk about each subset and just go through it really quickly, okay? So we talked about this before and basically this is the real number set and what we have on this side is the rational numbers and on this side are the irrational numbers. Now rational numbers were broken down into four categories. The natural numbers were the counting numbers, one, two, three, all the way up uh, to infinity. You had the whole numbers, which was the introduction of the number zero. And then you had the integers, which was positive and negative whole numbers. And then you had rational numbers, which were fractions of integers. Anything that's, that you could write as a fraction of these guys is a rational number. On this side you have the irrational numbers and the irrational numbers are anything that you cannot write as a fraction of integers. Integers or natural numbers are really prime numbers and again we went into a lot of detail in this in the first series so if you need a recap of prime numbers uh, take a look at the prime numbers video. So with the real number set if you, if you break it down to its basics, is this side is anything that could be expressed as a fraction of primes, as number one or as number zero, and this side is anything that cannot be expressed as a fraction of prime numbers. Okay? And that was the real number set, right? From here, we went and dealt with, you know, we learned how to deal with the numbers, and from there, we introduced operations so we took numbers and we said okay what can we do with these numbers well we added numbers we subtracted numbers we multiplied numbers we divided numbers so from here we came and we added you know the plus sign the subtraction sign the multiplication sign the division sign which is basically the four ways that we deal with you know the real numbers so there's a whole bunch of videos that I've already done which deals with this and deals with operations. And then what we decided to do in series two was introduce another layer to you know, our, our numbers, basically kick it up to another level. So initially we had, for example, we're going two times, does it show up? Let's do green. Two times five would have been 10, right? So this was our regular operation with the real number set, taking our rational numbers, these are just integers or natural numbers, right? You could go, go negative two here, all of a sudden it becomes an integer, right? So we went two times five is equal to negative 10. You got negative times positive, negative times positive is negative. What we did, we introduced exponents. So we took our base numbers here, right? And we said, hey, what happens if you put a number here? What does that mean in the language of mathematics? What does that symbol do? So if we put a two here, all of a sudden, we had exponents. And what we did with exponents was, hey, we created rules to 
represent our, you know, to deal with the symbols that we've created. So we took our operations really and applied them to exponents. So in multiplication, these two numbers multiplied together gives you 10. If you had two things multiply here with the same base and could be different exponents, those guys add it. So right. series two deals with this stuff, series one deals with the real number set and the operations. And it also has a section on trigonometry and geometry, which we're gonna, you know, talk about more again in every series. It's just gonna grow and grow, right? So we're gonna take all this information from series one and two and apply it somewhere. And as soon as we apply it somewhere, we're talking about the equal sign. And when we're applying it, we have to know what we're talking about. And that implies, you know, specifying what units we're talking about. So we're gonna take this information, apply it somewhere, which is basically dealing with the equal sign. And when we're applying it, we're gonna assign units to our numbers, right? So we're gonna try to see if one thing equals another thing, right? You know, and this comes up everywhere, you know, in sustainability, when you're talking about the environment, in equality, if you're talking about human rights, in business, you know, liabilities, assets, you have to balance the budget, right? What's gonna happen is, you know, we're gonna take things and, you know, try to see if they're equal to each other. So for example, let's do, um, let's do the real number set, right? In, when we did, when we did the series, and when we, when we draw the real number set, or when I draw the real number set, I break this up into two separate halves, right? And equal halves. But in reality, there's a lot more irrational numbers than there are rational numbers. So visually, this is really good just to remember, you know, how this is laid out. But in reality, there's way more irrational numbers than there are rational numbers. So there are areas, and we talked about this in geometry, if we haven't talked about it, we will talk about it. The areas of these two things may be equal visually but the numbers the number of numbers we have here is way less than the number of numbers we have here so these two sides in reality are not equal when it comes to quantity anyway when we're talking about quantity visually yeah the two areas we draw as equal areas right so again there's two areas might be the same but the quantity in each section is going to be different so again we're, we're going to take these rules and apply them places and uh, you know, learn how to, again, crunch numbers that have units in them and try to balance our equations. And then we're gonna talk about uh, getting into func functions, and this goes directly into functions and um, trigonometry, right? Where we did graph x, y axis, and we're gonna graph things and follow them up as functions. So series one, learning about the real number set, trigonometry, geometry, Series two, we learned about exponents and how to deal with our operations and exponents. And series three, we're gonna take all everything that we learned in series one and series two and apply it. And uh, you know, see where we go with it. And this might be a continuing because you know you can apply mathematics anywhere, you can talk about mathematics, use mathematics to talk about anything.